The wine world is constantly changing and evolving, but there are certain brands that have proven themselves over the years. There are the wines from famous producers, classified growths, and Cru vineyards that have inspired winemakers to one day make something as good as the stuff from the it wineries. But here's the thing, and I repeat myself, the wine world is constantly changing and evolving, and what once was may no longer be. That means for us, you and me, that we should look for alternatives to the great wines of the world to save a buck or two while tasting exciting wines. That is, if these Davids can beat Goliath in a fair fight, or rather a fair blind tasting. Leon has selected six wines from the same grape variety for me to taste blind. One of them is the Goliath, an expensive wine from a famous estate and region. And the other ones are the Davids, far less expensive and less famous wines. It is my job to rate the wines and identify the Goliath. So let's see whether the most expensive wine actually actually is the best. So let's start with wine number one. Like I said, I don't know which grape variety these wines are made from. They could be made from a whole lot of different grape varieties. There must be something classic in there, something that justifies wine to be called a Goliath. But there could be Riesling, Chardonnay, Pinot, Cabernet, Merlot, whatever. Lots of different grape varieties in that mix. So, well, clearly not Cabernet, I guess. We're starting on a very high level. So the wine is slightly golden in color, nothing that really gives away a lot, but the nose is pretty expressive. There's lots of lemon zest flavor here, creamy notes, something slightly buttery. Popcorn flavors, oaky notes, quite clearly. And it's not, but it's not overpowering. So there's a good balance between the fruit flavor and the oak. On the palate, there's actually quite a lot of body and structure, fresh acidity, great balance. This wine has everything it needs. So based on this wine alone, and mind you, we're tasting five more wines after this one, but I think this is a Chardonnay. I think this is a pretty classic Chardonnay. I don't think it is actually from a classic region or from the classic region, Burgundy. I think it feels a little bit more vibrant. There's more fruit flavor there. There's good intensity, good richness, but also this lively acidity there. And it actually it reminds me of a place where I lived and where I've tasted lots of Chardonnays made in this style. So for me, this tastes like New Zealand. But yeah, it's a bold guess. I mean, that could, it could be from other places as well. But, but for me, this, this complexity, the great quality in New Zealand Chardonnay is still so underrated. I think some of the best Chardonnays in the world come from New Zealand. And this is really, really good. I am going to rate this 93 points, a delicious wine to kick off this tasting. Another white wine, hopefully another wine that tastes like Chardonnay. Let's find out. Okay, this is quite different in style, and I might not even have guessed Chardonnay based on this wine alone. It could be a Chardonnay, but it could also be lots of different other grape varieties. So I would say there's almost no oak or no oak on this wine, especially compared to the previous wine that felt much more like it was fermented in barriques and aged in barriques as well. This is quite a bit more on the fruit. There's fresh apple character, a little bit of lemon flavor, too, it's not too deep and complex. On the palate, it actually has good grip, lively freshness, but it is less lively, I'd say, than wine number one. And it could be an unoaked Chardonnay, but it could also be a Pinot Blanc, Oxoa, whatever. I also struggle with placing this wine into a region. I mean, Chardonnay is planted all over the world, and this could be from many places. I'm just going to say it's from Europe. That's not a very bold move, I realize, but but yeah, it could be from, from many places. I'll rate it 89 points, and I don't think this is Goliath. I don't. Next up, we have wine number three. Let's see, wine number three. Wine number three is very interesting. It kind of points me back to Chardonnay. I think stylistically this feels very much like Chardonnay. 
It has less pronounced fruit flavors than wine number one. There's less oak here, but there is oak. The oak feels a little older, so there might be some new oak and some old oak combined in this wine. And it's quite spicy, a little bit more dirty. Interesting, for sure. On the pad, it's super grippy, quite fresh, very lively, super high quality. Definitely. But it doesn't quite feel Burgundian to me. First of all, this has a touch of naturalness. So it feels like it is made in a very low intervention way using very low levels of sulfides. Which doesn't mean that it couldn't be from Burgundy because there are quite a few of those wines there as well. But stylistically, I think this is a little bit more edgy, a little wilder, a little rougher than what I would expect from Burgundy. But it feels very much like the old world to me. Where else could it be from? I'm not really sure. This could be from other places in France. It could be from Germany. It could be from Austria. Maybe a completely out of the box wine growing region. But like I said, it feels very old world to me because it's quite rough and rugged and a little bit more um, edgy and structured, less fruit flavorful. So yeah, I think what is very clear here is that it is very high end. For me, this is a 92 point wine. Chardonnay for people who might not even like Chardonnay. A Chardonnay, there's more on the structure, less on the oak quite complex, but yet really complete. Let's move on to wine number four. Okay, this is very interesting. I think there's a certain exoticness to this wine, which points to a warmer region, but it feels still kind of old world to me. Um, the oak is very pronounced here, quite a lot of smoky oak flavors, but it is really well integrated on the palate. It is rich and concentrated, lots of body. There's even like, what do you call it? Traubenzucker. I think it's called dextrose in English. It is this slightly uh, fruity, uh, slightly sweet and artificial flavor. And I think that's a combination of ripe fruit and this intense oak flavor. I think this is Burgundy, but I don't think it's the Goliath, which should be from Burgundy, as we are talking about Chardonnay. And, well, this feels a little more sunny and rich and round, more like something from the south of Burgundy, rather than from the Côte d'Or, where most of the top-notch Chardonnays are from. So I'm guessing this might be a slightly cheaper alternative but it's really interesting. I don't think it's the most interesting wine of the tasting so far, but it is really well made. It's a little bit, a little bit blousy, a little too rich in my opinion, but it's still really interesting. All right. Again, I don't think this is the Goliath. We still have two to go. So let's hope that one of them actually is it. But I'm going to rate this 91 points. I think it's really good. Delicious Chardonnay. So here we go. Wine number five. Are you Goliath? Let's find out. This is a very interesting wine. It has like spicy notes. There's something slightly green going on here as well. It is, there's oak there, but not a lot of oak, not very pronounced oak flavors. And it's quite complex really complex. On the palate, it shows this beautiful balance between body, rippiness, acidity, and a certain wildness as well. Let me go back to wine number three, because three had a similar style, but now tasting them right after each other, actually this feels like something from Burgundy. It feels like something from the Côte d'Or, a little bit more high-end, not super top-notch, because otherwise there would be more oak involved here. There might even be a little bit more concentration there. But a more hands-off winemaker working in the Côte d'Or, maybe a Premier Cru level quality um, with reduced amount of new oak usage. Yeah, I think this is Goliath, even though it doesn't feel like your typical 
super high-end white burgundy. It feels more like, uh, yeah, a different kind of style, a little bit more edgy. Really interesting stuff, quality-wise, on a very high level. But I'm not going to go above the 93 points that I gave to wine number one. So I'm going to rate this 93 points. So last but not least, wine number six. By the way, I often rinse out my glass before I taste the next wine. It's just my way of making sure that the previous wine doesn't taint or improve the quality of the next. All right, wine number six is quite beautiful. The flavor is very complex. There's some smokiness there. There's also like the core of the green apple flavor, flavors of hazelnuts, lemon zest. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. On the palate, it has good body grip. The acidity is on the right level and there's quite a lot of complexity there. The texture is really, yeah, a little bit more rough and rugged, something that I quite enjoy. The wine has a long finish and this is difficult, again, very difficult to place for me. Chardonnay is tricky because quite a lot of it is winemaking as well. So the use of oak, the way it was handled in the winery influences the taste of the wine quite significantly. This feels like a cooler climate. It could be from the old world, but it could also be from a cool climate in the new world. I'd guess it could be Germany. It could be somewhere in Austria. It could be from the north of Italy, even though those wines usually taste different than this. It could be from a cool part of California, from South Africa, New Zealand again. I don't really know. If I'd had to guess, and I guess I have to, I'd say Santa Barbara, a cool part of California, very much influenced by the coast. And the wines can feel like this sometimes. I'm going to rate this wine 92 points. Very good wine. Very good selection overall. All right, it's time for the big reveal. I have had a pretty good tasting. I'm hoping that these wines are all Chardonnays. I'm pretty sure though. I mean, Chardonnay, especially if you have six of them, is fairly easy to spot and identify. My favorites were wine number one and wine number five both with 93 points, but I think the quality was very consistent. I mean, the only one that got less than 90 points here was wine number two, which was still a very good wine, but not quite on the same level as the others. So let's start with wine number one, which was one of the Davids for me. I thought it was from New Zealand. I thought it was absolutely delicious. I have a preference for Chardonnays from New Zealand, and I think they are still underrated. So go out and try more of those wines. But maybe, just maybe, I'm completely wrong. Let's see. Okay, I'm on fire right from the start. This is the 2021 Dog Point Vineyard Chardonnay from Marlboro. And so, so, so I was spot on there. Well done, Constantine. Good job. I know this producer, they're making great wines and this is no exception. I highly recommend it. So let's move on to wine number two. I, I think I didn't really know where it was from. I just said somewhere in Europe. So let's see. It actually has a Bordeaux shaped bottle, which is kind of odd for Chardonnay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not illegal for sure. But, but yeah, I, for me, Chardonnay belongs in one of those. Anyways. All right. Austrian, Sattlerhof. Haven't we had one of their wines on this channel before? I don't really remember. So it's the Ried Kapellen Weingarten Morillon from Austria, Südsteiermark. Morillon is the Austrian name for Chardonnay, so it's the same grape variety. I thought it was really good, but just not on the same level as the other guys. All right, wine number three felt more natural to me. I rated this 92 points, I think. And I thought it was really, really interesting, very well made, but, but a little wilder, a little funkier. And I thought it wasn't from Burgundy, but from, from Central Europe somewhere. All right. 
<gasps> I was wrong and so wrong. This is actually the Hubert Lamy Saint Aubin Premier Cru Le Frionnier from Burgundy. I was a bit confused between this one and wine number five because I thought they had some similarities there. But yeah, I just didn't didn't put this into Burgundy. Very interesting wine. And this could actually be the Goliath in the tasting. I'll 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 be able to look up the prices after the reveal, but this as a Premier Cru Burgundy, it probably was the Goliath. So Goliath didn't win. Kind of the same same story as, as the Bible version. So let's move on to wine number four, which I thought was from Burgundy, but from the warmer part of Burgundy, the Cochalones, I thought it was really well made, but it didn't have quite the same level of complexity as this one, that one, this one and that one. So I rated it the second worst or well, the fifth in, in the tasting. So let's, well, let's find out. Maybe I'm again, I'm wrong again. Let's, let's see. No way. So I'm actually wrong again. This is the 2020 Zier Eisen Hart uh, Chardonnay from Germany, from Baden. And it is the warmest part of Germany, and that's for sure. So it's it's a warmer region, and they are to the south, so right on the Swiss border. They are quite natural, actually. They're, they're making wines in a more hands-off uh, way. I thought that this was quite delicious. I don't remember them using as much oak as I detected in this wine, but but it is it is a really good wine, for sure. So only 5% new oak here, but it... it came through quite in, in quite a pronounced way. Fascinating. So <laughs> let's move on to wine number five, which I actually thought was the best wine in the tasting. I placed it in Burgundy. I thought it was kind of a little bit funky, but really interesting. It is from Burgundy. It is. It's the Rui Chateau de Troyes. De Troy. Les Fromanges 2021. So I rated this 93 points, so on the same level as this one. And I actually thought this was the Goliath. And it clearly, or likely wasn't. I don't, I don't think the a wine from Rui would trade at a higher price than Hubert Lamy's uh, Premier Cru here. So we found out in a second. But first, let's look at wine number six. Um, I rated this 92 points. I thought it was delicious, but it was very difficult to place for me. I, in the end, went for Santa Barbara in California, a cooler part of California, but let's, let's see. McHenry Honan Burnside Vineyard Chardonnay from Margaret River. So we're actually in Australia here. This is good stuff. So let's look at the prices. Leon sent me a list that I couldn't really look at during the reveal because it's all on one page. But let's see. So the Uber Lamy wine number three was actually the most expensive wine. It was the Goliath in this tasting, 100 euros. The Zier Eisen wine number four was 30 euros. So less than a third of the price of this. The Rui which which won the tasting for me is actually 25 euros the cheapest wine in the whole tasting and it's a quarter of the price of this and in my opinion quality wise even better than this the drop point was also really cheap 30 euros the Sattlerhof same price 30 euros and wine number six the McHenry was the second most expensive with 45 euros. So here you go. First of all, it's really interesting if you taste these wines blind. You might humiliate yourself a little bit. I had some big losses, but some wins as well. Um, but certainly you kind of detach yourself from the label and all the expectations and really focus on the quality of the wine in the glass. And this time, I mean, you could drink this bottle and this bottle together which were the best wines for me in the tasting and 
almost pay half of what you would pay for this bottle. Something to think about. That is not to say that this is bad wine and they are not ripping you off. I mean, it is. it might be much more expensive to produce wine here in a Premier Cru vineyard than in some other places. But still, I mean, when it comes to price quality ratio, there are certainly other wines on the table that give you more for less. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what is the next Goliath versus David challenge that I, I should look at? Which other grape varieties would you be interested in? Let me know down below. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay thirsty.